If I had to look back on these past few years and all the portraits that I've taken and try to pinpoint one thing that I've changed in my photography that has made my portraits much more beautiful and much better, I actually can. In today's video, I wanna talk about that one thing, that one thing that I changed when shooting portraits or I changed in my photography that has drastically changed my portraits for the better. And sure, I can say that shooting with professional models and knowing how to direct them, how to pose and choosing the right location, all of those make for a better portrait. However, in today's video, I wanna talk about something that I've kind of kept a secret. I haven't really told anybody that this is like how I take my portraits, but I'm gonna share it with you guys today. This secret is actually properly exposing my subject. Now, hold on. Why am I not properly exposing my subject to begin with? Well, let me tell you. So when I first started out in photography, I was told like many of you to underexpose the photos that I take. Every photo that you take, underexpose it because it's easier to bring back the shadows and, and save the shadows than it is with highlights. So I took that advice and every photo that I took, every portrait that I took, I underexposed my shots all the time. And over time with editing more and more photos, what I learned from underexposing my photos and then bringing back all those details and balancing my exposure later in post is that I actually lost a lot of detail and skin texture in my subject or my model skin. And this was a problem because if I wanted to skin retouch those photos, which many times I wanted to, I wouldn't have enough detail or texture in my subject's skin to be able to retouch properly. Underexposing also affected colors and my flexibility to manipulate those colors in post. One day I was editing this portrait and I brought up the shadows, brought up my exposure to balance out my exposure, it was an underexposed shot, and the photo just wasn't, I couldn't get the edit to look how I wanted it to. Like, colors were just not working for me. I couldn't get the proper contrast with it looking good. Some of the shadows were a little grainy or, or noisy, and I just couldn't get the image to look exactly how I wanted it to look. And so I wondered if this was because I was underexposing my image. And the one thing that kind of gave it away was, I was going down to my color grading tab, in Lightroom and I would add green or teal blue into the shadows and it wouldn't affect just my shadows. It would affect my entire image, like my model skin, everything. And so what I found out after doing some research and I don't know how true this actually is, but it kind of makes sense. And that's your color wheels, your highlights and shadow sliders, your curves adjustments, even your shadows tint slider in your color calibration menu on Lightroom. These are all based on how your photo looks in your histogram. So if you look at the top right in Lightroom, you will see your histogram for your photo. And if your photo is too underexposed, now the majority of your photo is going to fall into the shadows. And from my understanding, it doesn't matter if you raise your exposure or raise your shadow. Shadows. If you want to add some greens or blues using the color wheels adjustment in Lightroom, you're going to be affecting the majority of the photo because the majority of the photo fell into the shadow side on your histogram. So if you look at your histogram and you're editing a properly exposed photo, meaning that you have parts of your image falling into the shadows, parts of your image falling into the middle, and parts of your image falling into the highlights, well, all those color wheels are gonna act exactly how they should. And so my problem was is that I was losing a lot of flexibility that I could have had in post. Again, I don't know if this is true or not. If you do know, drop it down in the comments below, but it does make sense because this is the problem I was having with my photos. And so I switched it up and did it a little differently than I was told to do. Instead of exposing for my sky and for my highlights, I exposed for my subject's skin and for my subject's face. Even now, I still get blown out skies every once in a while, but I'd much rather take blown out skies than a portrait where my subject doesn't look good. For me personally, this little change in how I shoot has made a huge difference in my portraits. I'm able to get a lot more colors out of my image and I'm able to retouch skin because I'm retaining a lot of detail and texture in my model's skin. I also like to show my subjects and models of photos while we're shooting. Like I'll give them the camera and they can scroll through all the photos and it's nice that they're able to see the image a little closer to how it's going to look in the end instead of looking at 
a dark screen or an underexposed shot where they can't really they can't really see themselves. Like this little adjustment has changed everything for me. And so how do you start doing this? How do you expose for your subject and not the sky? Well, it's actually pretty simple. All I do is I look at my subject and then I look down at the camera and look back at my subject. And if the photo that's on the back of the camera looks exactly how it looks with my own eyes when I'm looking at my subject, then that's properly exposed for me. There are some things that you should be aware of though, and you should know a little bit about your camera. So for me, my a7 IV, I know that it has really good dynamic range. So I know just how much something can be overexposed until I lose that detail or I can't pull it back anymore. It's like this video right here, this side of my head, right now on the screen is overexposed technically like big time overexposed but I know the dynamic range of my camera will be able to pull those highlights back down if your camera doesn't get the best dynamic range you might want to underexpose your images a little bit because you don't want to risk some light hitting your subject's face and now all of a sudden all your photos are overexposed or your subject is overexposed too much and you can't get any of that detail back Obviously, underexposing is the safer option if you don't know how far you can push and pull your camera. But if you do know your camera, then I'd highly recommend exposing for your subject's face. That way you do have full flexibility when it comes to editing. Also, just a quick tip, if you are going to be properly exposing for your subject's face, but you don't ever want to expose too much because you don't know really where to set it, you can always use your camera's zebras if you have it. But one thing that all cameras have is metering. So if you go into your camera's metering settings, you can actually turn on spot metering and then move that spot to the center of your screen. Now, when you position your subject in the center of the frame, your spot should be hovering over their face. And then now you can use your camera's built-in light meter, which is the numbers at the bottom. And if it ever is blinking or goes past plus one, I recommend dialing your exposure back a little because you're most likely pushing your camera too much to that overexposure level. Using spot metering, your camera will take a light meter reading from where that spot is rather than the entire frame. Now that's not to say underexposing doesn't have its benefits. If you're a landscape photographer or a street photographer or basically any other photographer that doesn't capture up close photos of their subject, I would always recommend underexposing. This way you're guaranteed to retain and preserve all those details in your shadows and in your highlights. Like I said, the method I've been doing, I don't care if I blow out the sky because I mostly care about my subject. So if you want to retain all those details, I would highly recommend underexposing all the time. If you are a portrait photographer and you find that you're not getting the most out of your photos, your colors are not working the way you want to, you don't have enough detail to be able to skin or retouch, then I highly recommend exposing for your subject rather than for your highlights. With that being said, that's my secret. I don't know if that even is a secret, but if you found this video helpful, make sure you click that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.